kids off at the nursery. No, I can do it on my way into work. I better get moving, you know. Oh, are you still trying to get off early? Yeah, by lunchtime, defo. Mm -hmm. Can't leave all the arrangements to you, can I? It wouldn't be any wedding if it did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's that creeping through the door? Daddy, Hello. Hello. Come on. Come on. Come and have a snuggle. Sit with here with Teddy. That's a good boy. Mind you, might not be any wedding. Not if Lisa's got anything to do with it. Oh, she's old mouth. If I were you, I'd uh, forget about her. Easy for you to say. I don't trust her an inch. It's eagerly crowded round, hoping for some. Do you want me to put this suit in at the cleaners? Why would I want it cleaned? For your daughter's wedding. Love, I've told you. I've told our Jackie. If she wants to marry Max Farnham, she does it without my blessing. That's the end of it. Hiya. Hiya. How are you? Have them ready for the big day? <laughs> Getting there. Oh. Hey, when I heard about you and Max, I was made up. Just want to say congratulations. Oh, thanks. I'll see you later. Jackie, um, look, I know we've had our fallouts in the past, but I was wondering, I mean, we were good mates once, weren't we? Maybe we could start over again. After the way you abused my friendship? I don't think so. Yeah, but that's way behind me now. I'm not into that scally stuff anymore. I've really changed. Well, maybe you have. And I'm glad for you if it's true. But it's too late for me and you to be mates again. You've been there once and I'm not going back, OK? OK. Don't come to me when you need a mate, though. crime rates in the world, so you must be careful. Don't expect that everyone that approaches... Hey, be careful, Tops. Oh, thanks, love. Hey, you'll never guess what I'm doing here. I'm trying to send Jackie and Max an electronic wedding card. All oh, right. <laughs> to an email at the health club. Bit different, isn't it? Do you want me to sign it from you and all? Oh, no chance. After the way she's just spoken to me. Well, what's happened? Oh, she's just living in the past, that's all. She blames me for the Millennium Club going down the pan. Oh, she's still going to down on you over that? I'm not surprised, really. I mean, she blamed me for what happened with the law as well. Well, maybe you should send her a little card, then. Or maybe a wedding prezzy. You know, clear the air! Are you joking? She's the last bride on earth I'd send a prezzy to. You OK? I'm just a bit upset, that's all, Dad. But nothing exciting ever comes my way these days. Well, that's exactly how you want to keep it, and all you should be made up. Your life's like that. You're lucky to have come out of all that lot smiling with a few lessons learned. Not like Tim, he's got loads to learn, him. Eh? Look, do you want me to put your name on this card or what? Oh, what? <laughs> what do you think? Ah, <sighs> oh, Lisa. Back again? Now there's a surprise. Can I come in? After your last tirade about me and Jackie getting married over your dead body? I've taken advice from my solicitor. There are things we need to discuss. Yeah, well, not as far as I'm concerned. For the long-term welfare of the children. And as their guardian, I have the right to discuss such matters with you. You know that. Now, can I come in? Oi! Your mats is shopping. You are. I've just checked the floats you put in the tills this morning. They're both a fiver short. You said I've been dipping in the till? No, of course not. Why would you have time to dip the tills? What do you mean? Oh, the way you rushed off your feet in this place. Not. You said I'm not pulling my weight. You never do a tap. All you do is line your own pockets. The office is full of knockoff. The bar's cash only. Bev would go ape if she knew what was going on. Yeah, well, she doesn't, does she? And she won't. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, you're not going to get away with it. I'm quaking in my boots. Not. Morning. Oh, yeah. Still no buyers for the top shop, then? Not yet, no. Mm. She ain't gone for good, has she? Yeah, she went weeks ago. She's been a relief manager ever since. Oh. So, things all on course for the wedding? Yeah, I suppose. Look, Jackie, I know I'm not your ideal best man. I, I only said yes for Max's sake. Lance, I know. He's had such a tough year. Don't I know it? He's been really brave, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Look, I'll see you later. See you on the big day, then. What big day is that, then? Max and Jackie's wedding. They haven't invited you, have they? Well, Max has asked... Oh, Max has asked me to be his best man. Well, I hope you said no. I said yes, actually. You can't! 
Who's he marrying? Jackie Dixon. She lied about me in court, Lance. I ended up behind bars because of her, and, and you're going to be the best man at a wedding. What kind of brother are you? I'm only doing it for Max. So, he's marrying Jackie. He's as bad as her in my eyes. Yeah, but... Hey, he took us in, remember, when we have nowhere else to go. What's going on? I'm being betrayed by my own brother. Leanne? Well, I am. He's only said he'll go to Max and Jackie's wedding as best man. Oh, right. Hey, you've got the booze supply sorted out yet? Oh, don't you even think about it. What have I said? You better ask her, haven't you? Or I could just read my paper. It's bad enough having to save the lion cow in here without knowing you'll be sucking up to her at a wedding. She's always had it in for me. She accused me of throwing acid in her face once and all kinds. She got me sent down for it in the end and all. And he's going to the wedding? I've said yet no. Oh, I've told you, I'm only doing it for Max's sake. And what about my sake? You throw sicky. No, he shouldn't be making excuses. He should be standing by his own sister. He should be not going on principle. Oh, I'm sorry, but Max was there for us when we were at our lowest ebb. If he wants me to be his best man, then, then I'll be there for him. Anything you can think of we need from the shops? I've got more important things to worry about than shopping, love. I still want to be sure that you're going to be there standing up for me in court. I'm losing sleep over this, you know. Whether I'll be able to rely on you. Whether you'll be able to rely on me? Just like I can really rely on you, you mean? Like telling me the truth about where you really got that stupid gun from? When it comes down to it, Ron, the only thing I can rely on you for is to lie to me. Oh, come on, love. Never mind, come on. Why don't you just put yourself in my shoes for a minute? See if you trust yourself as much as you expect me to trust you. We're married, aren't we? We have to trust each other. Not when one of us lies through his teeth all the time. It's like a disease with you. How do I know if you've meant what you've said about Clint? How do I know if you didn't really just pull the trigger because you wanted to and blow giving him a chance to run away or give himself up. I don't know, do I? The same way I don't know whether you're genuinely sorry about what you did. Of course I am. Well, you say that, but how do I know it's not just another lie? Because it's the truth, I promise you. And if you think that I'd lie about something as important as that, well, all I can say is that you don't know me as well as you thought you did. You know what, Ron? You're dead right there. I don't know you even half as much as I thought. What? What's that? One wedding card sent. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully it'll get lost in the post or whatever happens to emails. Thank you, Sarky. Come on, spit it out. What's up with you? Oh, it's just all this talk about weddings, Dad. It just got me thinking about me and Peter. Well, it would, wouldn't it? And you know, all the plans and the dreams. Where are they now, eh? Give yourself time. You'll be living new dreams before you know it. Oh, yeah, stuck in that poxy garage. Well, OK, yes. Not as glam as the Millennium Club, we know that. It's about as far away as you can get. I mean, look at this. Stop for a sip and a snack. Have you any idea how many band drives we get through there? And what does every last one of them say? Can I stop for a sip and a suck, love? <sighs> I just want a life where I can be proud of myself, that's all. It's not too much to ask, is it? Lawful impediment? Oh, I bet that solicitor of yours threw that right back in your face. OK, so that wasn't an option, but me wanting the best for the children is... It seems to me that you're using Harry and Emma as excuses to rubbish Jackie. Not at all. Are you sure? Well, I have serious reservations about her, sure. Like? But oh, come on, it's not like you to pull any punches. OK, basically, I really don't trust her motives. And? Well, will you let me finish? Yes, if you've got something to say that's worth hearing. We could start with her feelings about Harry. And I know you'll say that she loves him like her own child, but he wasn't. He was Susanna's. Who is no longer with us. But Jackie made the deal, though. Oh, we've got to think about now and the future, not the past. 
Okay, so given how close she's got to Harry, I can understand her wanting to see him more often, but that's very different from her getting a clause into you. Why do you have to make everything sound so cheap and nasty? I'm just trying to be objective. As opposed to being destructive? She's already won with Harry. You've been so soft on her, she can get access to him any time she wants. But for whatever reason, she's not content to stop her, that is she. She wants the full hit. The wedding ring, the house, the whole thing. I mean, it's almost like she's trying to completely take over from Susanna. Doesn't that seem just a little bit strange to you? What seems strange is you can't be happy for me. Now, I know you've had a hard time losing your sister, but what I have here is the chance to restart my life with someone who loves me, and more importantly for Harry and Emma to lead a normal life whilst they're growing up. But you just seem to stick the knife in and twist it time and time again. Why can't you just be happy for us? Because she's got nothing in her own life, has she? No fella because she's such a cold-hearted witch. And no kids because nobody has ever lowered themselves to her level to start a family with her. Oh, come on, please. Why do you look in the mirror the next time you say that? I'm not the cold-hearted witch who sold her baby, am I? and then try to snatch him back again the night before my sister was getting married, the night before she was about to start on her new life with her two lovely children, the children you'd both given up on. Why don't you just go, eh? Why? Because you'd rather not hear what I have to say? Lisa! You should listen to this as well, you know. You've let her walk into your life and take over it. No wonder you are planning a secret wedding, is it? Excuse me, I'm gonna go and wash the children's hands. I mean, anyone with an ounce of sense can tell you what's happening here. Oh, come on, then. What is happening here? What is happening is you are conning Max into some fantasy future vision of happy family life. But that's not going to happen, is it? Because Max doesn't matter to you, does he? All that matters to you is your precious Harry. Oh, here we go. And you know what? When you think about it, the fact that Susanna's off the scene wasn't that convenient and for what you wanted all along. You what? Lisa, please. What are you saying? You can make your own mind up. What? Are you saying that she wanted her out of the way? You said it. You could have pushed her down the stairs yourself for all I know. Right, that is it. I wouldn't put it past you. I want you out of this house now. Too close to the truth, is it? I'll tell you what the truth is. The truth you won't want it here is that you just walked yourself out of Harry and Emma's lives. You're hurting me. I don't care. Who do you think you are, eh? Coming round here accusing me like that. And whether you like it or not, I'm marrying Max and I'm gonna be their mum. Jackie, she is their aunt. So? They won't need the Auntie Lisa anymore, will they? They'll get so much love from us, they won't need her. And we don't need you either, poking your nose in. So, Gucci, if you've got anything to say to us, you say it through your solicitor, right? Or don't you bother saying it at all. Now, go on, do one. Are you OK? As if you cared. Oh, Max, leave her! Jackie? What are you doing here? Oh, don't panic, I'm not here to cause trouble. What's going on? We've got an uninvited, unwelcome visitor. Yeah. Look, I just wanted to, yeah. I don't know, talk to you both. Yeah. Try and put things behind us. Say I was sorry, I suppose. And that was it? I know it sounds stupid, you don't have to believe me. But I wanted to say congratulations to you both. To wish you luck. Well, that seems like a very sudden change of heart. You're telling me? It's not, though, really, is it, Jack? And you know it isn't. Look, a long way back, when me and Jackie were going out, well, I said then that you two should be together. Right all along, wasn't I? But now you've gone and dumped me for Mr Right. Who are you trying to kid? I never dumped you for Max. I dumped you because you battered me. You dumped me because you're a Dixon, you mean? You what? Well, everybody knows what the Dixons think about the Moffats. That we're all no mark scum, only good for putting a bullet through. Yeah, I think it's time that you left. Yeah, too right it is. Yeah, you don't like it being shoved down your throat, do you? Well, neither do I. Look at the periods. Getting ready for your poxy little wedding. Why don't you just dance on our Clint's grave, eh? Daddy! Don't you dare say anything out of order, right? Don't worry. I've said what I had to say. You're there now, Harry. It's all right, you go and see to them. Robbie was just going now anyway. I'll be back in a minute. 
Right then. Time to say our goodbyes then, is it? He says our goodbyes the minute you lay your finger on me. I hope you have a happy life, Jack. I really do. I'll think of you in a few years' time when you pick a Max's pension up for him. Just go, will you? What you seen him, eh? He doesn't want someone to love him the way I loved you. He just wants some sort of glorified nanny he can get his leg over whenever he can manage it. Robbie, I'm not even going there. Because you know what? I'm happy with Max. Really happy. And I'm made up. I've got the kids to look after with him. What, they're both of them? Or just Harry? I mean Emmett as well as Harry. Oh, yeah. Honest. If anything happened to either of them, I'd die. But you know what? Do you know if something happened to you, I'd run the flags up. No, you wouldn't. You'd spend the rest of your days and nights wondering what you missed out on with me. You've got no idea, have you? You really need to sort your life out. Because regardless of what happened to your Clint, you're so screwed up and damaged, you need help. Proper help, I'm sure you do. Yeah, well, thanks for the advice, Jack. But I only listen to people I respect. I'm not jumped up little slags on the make from the sugar, Daddy. You still here? I'm going on, I don't wait yourself. Look, Jack, always remember what we could have had. Not what you're gonna have. Me haunting you for the rest of your life. You're gonna curse the day you ever met me. I promise. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I get the message. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Who was that? My solicitor. Giving me the details of the pre-trial hearing. What happens there, then? Well, he says it's like the final sort-out day before the proper trial begins. So they know they've got all the evidence and that ready. Suddenly it all feels very real when you talk about it like this. It's not going to go away, though, is it, love? No matter how hard we wish it would. Katie, it's Robbie. What do you want? I'll come and see you. Near yours. Got some stuff I want to tell you. What? Oh, Jackie. Some things I think you should know. I'm on the parade. All right. I'll be there in a minute. Maybe you shouldn't be making such a big fuss. Maybe you should just tell Lance to go and be done with it. It wasn't Lance that Jackie attacked, was it? And the one with the problem. Leanne. What a good-hearted person, do you know that? Do you reckon? Of course you are. We're giving in to your Lance. I'm not sure about that. I know. He's your brother, isn't he? And family stick together. It's one of those unwritten rules that's written in stone. How do you mean? Well, blood stick in the water. I never really have understood that. All I'm saying is that he's your brother. And there's no way he should be choosing Max and Jackie's wedding over you. And if he does, then he's derelict in his family's duties, isn't he? Well, what do you think he should do, then? You want to tell him straight whose side he should be on. And if he chooses the wrong side, you want to show him a red card. I couldn't do that to our Lance. Leanne. Look, right, this is really hard for me to say, right? But you don't hear the way people talk about him. And you defend him to the hilt, I know you do, but he doesn't do the same for you. He's always bad-mouthing people. I always thought he was that popular. Couldn't be further from the truth. Everyone knows it except you. He's a nasty, poisonous little queen. Well, is there another senior partner available? It's about the custody of my sister's children and it's urgent. Mr. Lloyd told me I could call him at any time. I suppose he's down the golf course, is he? Just when I need him. Honestly, you wouldn't believe what she was like. The things she was saying. How many of them now to try and patch things up with her? Then she starts going on about all kinds. Really bad mouthing you and our Clint. Saying what? I don't know, it makes me feel sick to the stomach. Will you tell me? She said that our Clint got what he had coming to him. She said he deserved to die. Why would Jackie say something like that? I'm sorry I told you now. Oh, don't be sorry. I'm glad I know. She's dead when I see it or worse. Right. I think that's enough screen time for the old eyeballs. Do you want mustard on this? Please, love. Doesn't it give you a headache being on that for so long? Not as much as your mother used to. Banging on at me night and day. 
It's not the same without her around, you know. Yeah, but life goes on. Things change, love. I know. Yeah, and you've had your fair share of them in your time. Yeah, never been able to settle down, though, have I? That's the way of the world for some people, love. You know, I see all these people coming into the garage, in the family saloons, the cosy semis waiting for them at home. You know, perfect couples, family holidays, dad getting buried in the sand, mother getting legless on sangria. It just makes me wonder sometimes. I mean, why haven't things worked out like that for me? Love, you're still young. You want to give yourself time. Lemonade, all right? Yeah, fine. Look, I'm sorry about that with Lisa before. I, I just lost it. Oh, well, that was pretty clear. Not sure it was the right way to handle her, though. I'm not sure. Oh, so what should we have done? Just let her walk all over us? I mean, who does she think she is, eh? Coming round here and banging on about Harry and Emma all the time. I mean, before Susanna died, she hardly ever used to come and see them, did she? I mean, it's not like she's always been close to them. Oh, she takes her responsibilities very seriously. Just the way she thinks Susanna would have wanted. But, Max, the stuff she was saying today, though, that wasn't about being their guardian, accusing me like that. Do you know what? She's lucky she didn't get a good slap. Mm. I'm just worried what she might do now, that's all. Well, I really don't care, because she can do and try what she likes. But there's no way she's wrecking our wedding day, and neither's Robbie. Well, he certainly got what he deserved. It's how he'll react, that worries me. Mm. Do you think he'll come round again to try and get back at us? Who knows? Wouldn't put anything past him. Emma? Where's Harry? Harry? Harry! What's up? Where? Did Harry come inside with you? No. Why? Where is he? I don't know. Oh. He's gone. Harry's gone! Max, he can't have. Harry! 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 He was here a minute ago. He can't have gone far. Unless... I don't think he's... He's been snatched. What's wrong? It's Harry. Well, me and Mike are going to go round the Moffat, get the baby back, and teach that Robbie a lesson he'll never forget. And did he have any distinctive marks? <laughs> well, why do you need to know that? Face facts. He was a Robin, no Mark Scally. Ow! <gasps> but he could be anywhere. No, no, the police will find him. Brookside is back with an hour-long special tomorrow at 8. Next up, do you fancy an ex-convent or a real-life chateau? Decisions galore on four in A Place in the Sun, coming up. What do you want? Dad, have you seen Harry? Jacqueline, what's wrong? It's Harry. Robbie's taken him. Yes, it's my son. He's been taken. Yeah, no, but you see, the thing is, I know who's done it. Sorry. It's Max Farnham. Seven, Brookside Close, Manor Park. He's three. With the car keys? On the hob in the kitchen. Are you positive Robbie's responsible? Well, he was round earlier kicking off about me and Max getting married. And then when Max went to bring Harry and Emily from the garden, Harry was gone. Yes, he is. Where are you going? To find me nephew. Hey. Keep me posted, OK? Yeah, Robbie's going to wish he'd never been born when I get my hands on him. You're not even supposed to be driving. I'll manage. Don't worry, love. Everything's going to be all right. How all concerned about us now, are you? Of course I'm concerned. You're my daughter and Harry's my grandson. 
Yeah, and Max is his dad. If that scumbag Moffat, he's gonna take it, Harry. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna pay his mother a visit. What's going on? There's no way you're up to driving. And whose fault's that? Look, I'll drive you. You're joking, aren't you? Last time I was in the car, would you spend the next few months in a wheelchair? It's because I was off my head. Look, I'm steady as a rock. Look, I suppose I could do with the backup. Okay, we'll just wait there. I'll be too sex. Just getting something from Jimmy's. Get a move on, will you? I wanna be a minute. I'm Harry's mum. It's probably best if we go inside and get the details. Yeah, but we know who's got him, so what else do you need to know? Can we help in any way? Look, I'm not sure. Kids that age, they can be a lot more mobile than you think. Well, maybe he's wandered off into the woods. That's an idea. Let's go and have a look for him there. All oh, right, I'd better get back. Well, come on, then. Oh, yeah, what are you doing with that? It's all right, I'm only borrowing it. Without asking. <sighs> Just seen a couple of busies going into Max Farnham's there. What's been going on? Him and Jackie have just had the kids snatched by that Robbie Moffat. That's why I needed this. And what are you going to do with it? Well, me and Mike are going to go round the Moffats, get the baby back, and teach that Robbie a lesson he'll never forget. <sighs> Jackie needs the 18 when she winds up with the tweenies. Hey, we took care of that scally before. And what if there's more than Robbie Moffat, hey? What if there's loads of Moffats when you get round there? Haven't thought of that, have you? Yeah, of course we have. It's just that we haven't had enough time to get enough backup. Aren't you biting off more than you can chew? No, we can handle them. Not without help, you can't. You thinking of coming? Yeah. And? But you're a... A what? A girl. Oh, so you had noticed. And by the way, this is mine. Yours? Yeah. There's a few things you don't know about me. Right. You coming. Mrs Farnham. I realise how upsetting this is. It's Miss Dixon. But you are Harry's mother. Yeah, and I want you out there finding them. There's a few details we have to get from you first. But we've given you the name of the fellow who's gone, and what other details do you need? So you actually saw Mr Moffat take Harry? No, but he was round here just before he went missing. And he threatened to abduct your child? Not in so many words, but he was making threats. He said I'd curse the day I met him. You mind if I sit down? No, not at all. First off, we have to fill in what's called a missing from home report. <clears throat> He's not missing. It's not like we've just left him behind at the shops or anything. He's being kidnapped. Don't you lot listen? We have procedures for a reason, Miss Dixon. Now, when did you realise your son was missing? Just before 12. Yeah, I'd be making lunch while he was playing outside in the garden. I went out to get him and he was gone. And what was he wearing? Um, he had his little... Blue hood the top on. Yes, I think so. Yeah, that's it. He had his blue top on and his denims and his shoes and socks. And what kind of shoes? Um, oh, he had his new little white trainees on with red stripes on the side, black soles. And did he have any distinctive marks, a birthmark, anything of that nature? <laughs> Why do you need to know that? I thought we could do with some backup. So you'd ask these two? Hey, we're just as worried about finding Jackie's kid as you are. How can you be? I'm telling you! I'm going to have to ring my mum. You're not going to ask her to come as well, are you? Well, if we're going to be late, I'm going to have to get someone to collect our Kylie. Hey, there's a time and a place, you know. Hey, I'm a mother. I'm taking care of my child. Isn't that what this is all about? Oh, come on. Can we just get going? Well, we're supposed to be going to Moffat's to get my nephew back, not on a day trip to Blackpool. Some things never change. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, people try and help out, and all you do is whinge. Like I never had to listen to your moaning when we were going out. Yeah, well, you never gave me anything to moan about. And if you did, I must have been faking it. Hang on a sec. You never told me you and Lynn's were... I hate to break up this little reunion. But we've got a kid to find, haven't we? Yeah, but you and Mike... <sighs> Come on, drive, will you? I've put Emma in a cot as well. Thanks. And you think Mr Moffat is holding a grudge because you decided to end the relationship? There's more to it than that. Robbie's brother was... Clint Moffat. Right. And your father's Ron Dixon? Yeah. I expect you know the rest. I can see now why you think Mr Moffat's harbour in a grudge. Mind you, and this is off the record, any scally who breaks into someone's house, they're taking their chances. It's not only down to that. 
Robbie was off his head before it happened because I dumped him. Look, that's why we're so sure that he's involved. He discovered that we were getting married, you see? So he thinks that our decision is intended as some sort of slight. Yeah, he's totally paranoid. And seeing that he's had no luck getting to us, he's decided to do this. It sounds like he could be involved, and we'll check it out thoroughly. But you can't be 100%. You ready, then? Okay. Hey. You might be best if you stay where you are, sunshine. What for? You're a dick, son. And what difference does that make? Use your loaf, will you? You go in there and can prejudice your elf fellas trial. All right, I'll wait here, but I'll tell you what, if that Robbie shows his face, I'm not holding back. Right, well, we won't be long. And uh, keep the engine running. If he is in there, they might try and do a bye. Hang on. What are they doing here? The same reason as us. It's dead creepy, this. You're not scared, are you? A place like this freaked me out. Val says my mum's gone to town, but she should be back soon. And what if she's not? I'll just have to pick Kylie up myself. Let's hope we've found Addy by then. Hey, so you and Mike went out, yeah? Yeah. How long for? About a year, wasn't it, Mike? I don't know, it lasted a while. Didn't work out then, no? Well, seeing as I'm married to Rachel, and Lindsay here plays for the other side, I'd say that was a safe assumption. You don't mind me asking something, do you, Lindsay? No. Got nothing better to do until the busies disappear. You know sleeping with Mike. Is that what turned you into, you know, a lesbian? Hey, you. Um, can we change the subject here? Hey, she hasn't had the chance to answer you. No, it wasn't. Curiosity satisfied. Next topic. No, hang on a minute. So, so I had nothing to do with it? No. Stands to reason, doesn't it? Once you've had the best steak, you ain't going back for them scrag ends of beef. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here, you know. This is my daughter we're talking about, you. Hey, I didn't have my best steak here. More like chipolata if memory serves me right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. We would have found him by now. We've still got a bit to check. What's that? What? Gone out as well, then. You stop there. Stop where? Jumping your fingers like that. Well, pardon me. I just happened to be worried about me. Your nephew has gone missing. Hey, you'll be all right, you know. We'll make sure of that. Hey, what about that, eh? Bit of that gives you a nice sense of optimism in the Islandies. I'd have to say, out of two, I'd give her one. So is she your tag, Linz? Oh, yeah. Minta belongs me. Better keep an eye on your Emily. Hey, you? <laughs> I thought that was most straight blokes' fantasy. What is? Do we have to talk about this? Well, the idea of two women together. Now, I knew this Scottish fellow and he was dead into it. He even got this girl to beat me up so we could get his jollies. Sick if you ask me. Well, most women have me. The idea of two girls doing it doesn't bother them. So I don't know why blokes get all weird about two men doing it. <sighs> the idea knocks me sick. I know. It's not natural. What are you two like, eh? If you were born in ancient Greece, you wouldn't have been saying that. You might have been at it like rabbits. It's the last kebab I'm scoffing, I tell you. Here we go. Right. Let's wait till they're well clear. Right. I'll let them know. What is it? Have they found him? I'm afraid not. And it looks like Mrs Moffat isn't going to be much help to us either. What she said? Two of our officers have spoken to her, and she's claiming she doesn't know where her son is or how we might get in touch with him. Lion cow. For what it's worth, we're not convinced either, but we can't make her tell us where Robbie is. See, now do you believe us? Why would she be covering up for him if he wasn't involved, eh? As I said from the start, it's very important that we keep an open mind. But who else could have taken our son apart from Robbie? You tell me. You keep Dixie. Have you seen anyone come and sound that on? I should be coming with you. I feel like I might be staying here while you're not sorted. I've told you that now. You can't risk it. Not with your little fella's trial coming up. Now you behave yourself. Come on, you two. Is it 
Is there anyone else you can think of who might hold a grudge against you? I'm not bad enough to want to do this. Well, I have to say it, like, but Katie Rogers is a possibility. Well, I never thought she'd go this far. Don't be soft. Ignore him. What was that name? Katie Rogers. She lives in one of the flats above the parade. Right. Now, why do you think she might want to get back at you? I don't. Her and Jackie were mates. In fact, she was close to the whole family, but... that ladder shot... that was her boyfriend. And has she made any threats? Well, not to me. She hasn't. Well, she has to me. Why are you covering up for her? I'm not. But the idea of Katie taking Harry is ridiculous. You think she might be unstable? Yeah. No. She's been struggling to come to terms with the death of her boyfriend. They were going to get married. Yeah, well, I saw her on the parade before with that scum Moffat. They were as thick as thieves. Might be worth checking out. We're looking for Robbie Moffat. I've told you. You don't mind if we come in, do you? He's not here. Hey! We'll see for ourselves, love. You seem a bit sceptical about Katie Rogers being involved. I am. Why did you say that about Katie? Now she's going to think we've put the busies onto her house of spite. You heard what she said. They've got to talk to anyone we think might be involved. Yeah, and you're using that to keep up this vendetta you two have got going. Hey, come on. It's not just me, is it, eh? There's no love lost between you and her, either. Well, I still don't think she put me through this, Dad. Jackie, do you want little Harry back or not? Don't you dare ask me that. You turned your back on me, remember, so you've got no right lecturing me about my son. He's my grandson. I'm not officially, he's not. Not until me and Max get married, which is what you've been trying to put the skids under. Jackie, WPC Williams has a few more questions. Right. I was explaining that another common scenario in cases like this is someone who's been denied access to the child, a parent or grandparent, for instance. But Mr Farnham tells me his wife died last year. You didn't tell her about Lisa? Oh, come off it. Who's this? Susanna's sister. We've all fallen out. In fact, she was round here earlier having a go at me and Max. I wouldn't put anything past her. So you're not letting her see the children? Uh, that's correct. And do you have an address for her? Yeah. We didn't come round here for a kick-off, love. Could have filmed me. All we want is for you to tell us where Robbie is. The Dixons send you. Listen, we all know there's no love lost between you and them. But a kid's gone missing here. So it has to be down to my Robbie. Well, that's what we want to find out. If Jackie Dixon's kid's gone missing, then I'm sorry about that. But that lot are using it as an excuse to have another go at my family. Hey, we didn't just pick your name out of the phone book, you know. Your Robbie was round there earlier, threatening all sorts. Oh, you saw him, did you? No. But there's no reason to lie. That's where you're wrong. Jackie Dixon's lost her kid for a few hours. I've lost my son forever. And now that lot want to paint the rest of my family as black as they can so they can justify my son's murder. You're the one that's playing games here. We just want to find Robbie before he does something to that kid. And how come you're so definite that my Robbie was involved? Did you phone the psychic hotline? Now, I'm telling you what I told the busies. Robbie's got nothing to do with this. You know what it's like to be kidnapped, do you? No. But I know what it's like to lose a child. So you wouldn't want anyone else to go through what you've had to? I am not offering me other son up to some Dixon lynch mob. So you might as well do one. We're not going anywhere, love. Let's have a look around, Tim. See if there's any signs he's been here. Right. You'll be OK on your own, love. I'll be fine. Shirley and I can have a little chat, one mother to another. Is this one of the shoes Harry was wearing when he went missing? Yeah. Where did you find it? One of your neighbours located it in the woods at the back of the house. It looked like it had been left there deliberately. Why would someone do that? This is down to Robbie. He left that on papers. He's torturing us. So, how long have you known Jackie Dixon? Oh, for a long time, years and years. Good mates, are you? Hardly. Why are you putting yourself out there? Because I can't stand the thought of a child in danger. It makes me physically sick. Must be good mates. Risking going to jail for it. I don't think I am. Do you? You've forced your way in here. Yeah, but you're not going to tell the busies. You're not that type. Oh, is that right? Oh, you had a bet money on it. You might be hard-faced, but you're not a grass. That's right, I'm not. 
And if I wouldn't grass you up, I'm not likely to grass me own son up now, am I? Even if he's taken a child. He wouldn't. Precious kids, aren't they? And you always want to believe the best of them and all. Must have come as quite a shock to you when you found out your Clint was a thief. You didn't even know him. I had a brother, he's dead now. Loved him to bits, but as much as I loved him, I knew he was no good a loser. Maybe your Clint was the same. He wasn't. Ron Dixon found him robbing his house in the middle of the night. He wasn't a thief. Face facts. He was a robber, no Mark Scully. Ow! Get out of my house! Truth hurts. My Clint wouldn't have armed a fly. And he wasn't a thief either. Yeah, but we know what Robbie's like, don't we? Hey, <gasps> can't say the same for him now, can you? <laughs> now, you might be the mother of the year, for all I know. And you don't want to see your other son hurt. And you know what? I'd do the same if I was standing where you are, because I love my daughter, and I'm sure you love your son. But none of that changes the fact that there's a little lad out there who's terrified, probably begging to get back to his mother. Now, you might think I'm the bitch from hell, right? But you're going to tell me where Robbie is. Otherwise, I'm not going to be responsible for my actions. <laughs> Max, <laughs> do you mind if I have a moment with Jackie, please? Of course not. How are you feeling, love? I'm sorry, Dad. I must have been in shock. Hey. You no need to feel sorry. If anyone should be apologising around here, it's me. You were right to have a go at me earlier. And I know that you love Harry with all your heart. Your kids, you want them to be safe. You want them to have the best. Not make the same mistakes you have. To have money and Max isn't a mistake. All I'm saying is, you think I've been pig-headed, and I probably have. But it's only because I care about you. So why are you pushing me away? Because I'm a very stupid man. I don't think about what I'm saying. I do. If I hadn't got that gun and did what I did, Harry would have been here now, and you and Max wouldn't have been going through hell. This is down to Robbie. Yeah, and why has he gone on the rampage in the first place? Because I killed his brother. I should have pleaded guilty, Jack. That's what I should have done. Maybe then he would have left us alone. But I'm too much of a coward. He hid behind a gun. And now I'm hiding behind fancy lawyers. I should face up to what I've done. Dad, you're protecting your family. Look where it's led us. An eye for an eye. That's what the Bible says, doesn't it? Robbie is doing this to get back at me, not you. Love, I know you're only saying that to make me feel better, but you and I both know that this is my fault. And I know that you've got no reason to believe me after all the stupid things I've said. But I would gladly spend the rest of my life behind bars. If it meant my grandson could come back to us safe and sound. <laughs> Christ, you better tell us <coughs> where he is, right? We can't leave you alone with another one for two seconds, can we? No sign he's been here. What did I tell you? Yeah, well, you know where he is. Well, even if she does, she's not going to tell us, is she? You got that right. I meant what I said. We're not going back until you give him up. That could be the busy's back. Come on, we better get off. Let's see what it is first. Aye, aye. Look who it is. Junior? Well, funny enough, I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> you still miss her, don't you? You think that Jackie and I are rushing into this? That's not for me to say. I love Jackie and I want to marry her, but it's times like these that it makes Susanna's death seem... What? Doesn't matter. You can't go living in the past, you know. What's important now is this little one and getting her brother back. 
if Susanna is up there, she'll be looking down on us and hopefully she'll be looking down on Harry as well, keeping him safe from harm. I'm sure she is. What happened to her was senseless. Look, Max, I know this has hit you hard, but you really need to stay strong for Jackie's sake. Yeah, you're right. What's done is done. You're joking. You didn't know. Of course I didn't. Jackie must be in bits. So how come you're around here then, eh? What do you mean? Well, a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Bobby Moffat takes Jackie's kid and you turn up here for tea and cakes. You are bang out of order. Attacking Shirley, accusing me. I'm trying to find a three-year-old. You OK? Yeah, just a bit shaken, that's all. What do you think you're playing at? Like Lindsay said, we came round here to find out where Robbie is and to get Jackie's kid back. Things just got a bit out of hand, that's all. And she won't tell us where Robbie is. What are you trying to prove, eh? Jackie Dixon can't stand the sight yet, and as for you, didn't you get enough of prison the first time? I'm helping out Mike. That's what mates are for. So you fancy sticking your neck out for a Dixon? Well, good luck to you. Because if you think they'd do the same for you, you're living in the same cloud cuckoo land as him. Now, you lot either do one or I'm picking up the phone and calling the police. Uh, listen, love. You've got till a count to five. OK, we're going. If anything happens to that kid, no one round us is going to forget what side you were on. Five. I want him back, Max. I want him back so much that it aches. And we'll get him back. But he could be anywhere. No, no, the police will find him. What if they don't? They will, darling, they will. You've got to believe me. <gasps> They're not knowing that's killing me. <sighs> Look, Jackie, we're going to get through this together. I couldn't have coped since, since Susanna died without you. You were a rock for me. You were there for me when I needed you. And look where it's got us. Our son's gone. He's God knows where. With a madman who's capable of anything. Look, Jackie, I want you to listen to me. Look, Harry is coming back, and when he does, he's going to know that he's got a mummy and a daddy that love him and his sister very much. And it doesn't matter what people think about us or what they say or their pathetic attempts to keep us apart because we're a family. And families endure. Got a bit heavy back there, didn't you? She was lying. Well, as long as you don't think Jackie Dixon's going to be your bezzy after this. I didn't do it for her. So what did you do it for? I did it for me, because I'm fed up with everyone thinking I'm a loser. You're not a loser as far as I'm concerned. Is that right? Lindsay, you are a great mother, and I couldn't wish for a better daughter. <sighs> Thanks, Dad. Look, I don't mean to sound hard faced, but that's not enough. I want to be somebody. Not just the girl in the blue sweater behind the counter at the local petrol station. And you will be, love. One day. We should have got her out of them. She was going to call the busies. We'd have been back to square one. And where are we now? We've got no idea where he is. Hey, we did try. Yeah, Lindsay was all over that Shirley one, but she just wouldn't crack. Get off on that, did you? What? Well, two women rolling round on the shag pile. Only you seemed a bit curious about it before. Oh, no, <laughs> I was just trying to start a conversation, that's all. Do you know what? I should have come in as soon as I saw that little cow Katie Rogers turn up. You did the right thing staying where you were. I told you, you can't afford to get too involved in all this. Me, I thought I'd even saw it with Robbie earlier. They must have been discussing it. I can't see that. Anyway, Katie's been through a lot lately. Why is she coming round here on the bounce? Do you know what? I bet you they've cooked up this whole thing between them. They can't get at me our fella or Jackie, so they take Harry. Let's go. Move it round the corner. Then. They've gone. Time you made that phone call. as well Aaron and Max have got each other. I'm not sure either of them would cope if they were facing it on their own. I suppose when something like this happens, you've got to stay strong for each other. If you both fall apart, that's it. Game over. A bit like you and me, really. Don't tell me you're starting to accept Jackie wanting to be with Max. Oh, I've still got my doubts about him, but... Well, I can see that he cares for her. And isn't that what counts? Sounds like this it is, yeah. 
And getting through the hard times is what good marriages are all about. You reckon I've been hard on Max, don't you? I think you should stop dwelling on his past. We've all made mistakes, haven't we? Oh, thanks, Mum. I really appreciate that. Bye. All sorted? Yep. Oh, I feel really bad, though. It's Carly's first day back at school. Well, we'll make it up to it tonight. Besides, you're hardly being selfish. It sounds like you're busy having your nails done. I don't know how these private detectives manage it. Sitting in a car for hours on end, day after day. It's worse than being in prison. Yeah, and then when you get out, no one gives you a break. Tell me about it. Mike and Lindsay had the same problem when they got out. You two were inside. Oh, don't even go there. It's a long story. Thanks for reminding me. Is that what turned you into a legendary? <laughs> I think you've been watching too many films. What do you think was the worst thing about going in prison? The food. And not being able to go to the bog when you want. No, you're all wrong. You see, none of you have done enough time to know what's really the worst thing. Go on then, Jimmy. Enlighten us. Being away from your loved ones. Never seeing your kids. That's what really gnaws away at you. Yeah, you're right there. That's what Jackie's facing now. And what did she do to deserve this, eh? I'm really missing Kylie now. Maybe Jackie won't have to wait too much longer. Think she's going to see Robbie. Well, there's only one way to find out. Take your time. You don't want to risk getting too close and there's partners. You know what I'm doing? Sorry, Jack, I've let you down. I've let you all down. Oh, don't be soft. If anything happens to little Artie, I'll never be able to live with myself. Listen, nothing's gonna happen to him, right? Robbie's doing this to get back at me. And sooner or later, the busies are gonna catch up with him and we're gonna get Harry back. I hope so. I hope so. Come, Crimbo. You'll be watching Harry and Emma and Baby Beth. All unwrapping the presents. <laughs> and all this business will be like a bad memory. All my grandkids? Yeah. That'll be magic. Max is a good man, you know. Jackie, all I wanted for you was the best, you know. That's all I've ever wanted for me, family. And that's what I'm getting when I walk down the aisle with Max. The best. <laughs> Waiting for. Take it easy, Speedy. Well, she's deaf will come to meet Robbie. Why else would you be around here? Look, if we go charging in there like a bull in a china shop, he might well scar her before we've had a chance to talk to him. That's <sighs> well, okay. Now. But take it easy, will ya? We've come this far, we don't want to blow it now. You wanted to see me? Here I am. Have you got him with you or is he stashed somewhere? We're going to pop next door for a bit. Give you some time to yourselves. Well, there's no need to do that. You're more than welcome to stay. Now that's good of you, but at least I know Jackie's in good hands. So who says I have got him? Well, why did you want to meet me here? I'm keeping a low profile. There's a few people around here who'd like to rearrange my face. Well, if you're innocent, what's the problem? Well, from what my mum said on the phone, these were into getting heavy first, asking questions later. Oh. Looks like you're going to take some more convincing and all. Me telling you on the phone not good enough for you, eh? I want you to tell me to my face. 
I know your mum's told you everything that's gone on. What, about the Dixons? Sending some no-marks galleys around to try and find me? Yeah. And if I find them, they'll end up floating face down in a mazy. I never meant that. I meant to ask Harry going missing. Yeah, and straight away, everyone puts me in the frame. Typical. So you've got nothing to do with it? Look, if I had gone, where is he? No, Katie, I don't go round terrorising tots. I wish I'd never gone round there. I only went to wish Jackie and Maxwell. But even when you go out of your way to be nice to her, your mate Jackie always manages to twist it. She thought... She thought the worst, as usual. She never even gave me a chance. It wasn't bad enough that she two times had that geriatric Divi Max Farnham. But now she's trying to make me out to be some sort of weirdo. And you're no better. But why should I believe you? After all the lies you've told in the past. Cos I'm telling the truth. I swear on our Clint's grave. Look, I might take the Dixons, but I don't hate them enough to take her out on some innocent little kid. You've got to believe me, Katie. I'm innocent. I have to be sure. Well, I told you now. I haven't got him. Happy. Where's Harry? Well, he'll have him hidden away somewhere, won't he? In the past. How they sick can you get? My family, my brother. And in the end, I couldn't even manage that. That was down to Ron Dixon, not you. I know, yeah. But even after I've lost the person that's the most important to me in the whole world, people still think the worst. I had to ask you. Did you? It'd been easier if you did have him. At least then Jackie would know where he is. Must be tortured for it all this. I'm sorry, Robbie. I really am. I better ring Jackie. At least I'll get the Dixons off your back. Go ahead. And look, telephone me. I hope to find them soon. Jackie. Katie. I'm with Robbie. You what? Jackie, he hasn't got Harry. He stands up next to me right this minute and he's told me he's got nothing to do with taking him. And you believe him? He, he could be lying. I'd know if he was lying. Listen, talk to myself if you don't believe me. Jackie, I swear on my ma's life, I've got nothing to do with it. Look, I know I've been out of order in the past, but this, this is just sick. In fact, if I could get hold of who'd done it, I'd give them a good kicking. So you didn't do this to get back at me? Cos when you were around here earlier, that's what you sounded like you were wanting to do. Look, so you think I'm violent? You think I'm evil? But you think I'm daft enough to have a go at you and then two minutes later snatch your kid off you? Come off it, Jack. I wouldn't risk a ten-year stretch just to get back at you. Put Katie back on, will you? You're OK. And I hope you find them. See, I told you, it's been straight up for once. Thanks for letting me know. See ya. Robbie, why? Well, Casey's tracked him down. But she said that he hasn't got him. Are you sure he isn't lying? Well, I didn't know at first, but I think he's being honest. If Robbie hasn't got him, then who has? I think it's time we had a word. Oh, good. Could be some paedophile's got hold on for all she knows. Would have been better for her if I did, haven't Hey! Moffat! You set me up. I never. They must have followed me. You liar. I'm not. Listen, I'll talk to them. Did they look like they're in the mood for talking? See you. I'm cold. You not go after them. I'll stay here with Katie. I'll call her an ambulance, make sure she's okay. Come on. 
I had to hear from a policeman that my nephew's missing. Oh, and they also wanted to know whether I kidnapped him. Well, I'm sorry, but the police wanted to know the names of anyone that we weren't on good terms with. Oh, so who was it who gave them my name? Let me guess. Well, for all we know, it could be you. Don't be ridiculous. And you've been desperate to keep me from having my son back since Susanna died. Are you seriously accusing me of kidnapping my own nephew? But that's exactly it. He's not yours. I'm his mum and Max is his dad. But my sister... Oh, the sister who I pushed down the stairs so that I could steal her husband and get my son back, is he? Things get said in the heat of the moment. Which is why these recriminations have got to stop right now. Oh, hang on, Max. She's been the one making wild accusations. But at least what I'm saying makes sense. Why would Lisa take Harry like this? To stop us getting married. And you heard what that busy said earlier. Most of the time, kids are taken by people who've been denied access. And after what she said to us the other day, it's not like she was going to get to see Harry or Emma again. I love those children. Enough to try and take one of them off us. Face it, Lisa, you're nothing to Harry. There's no blood connecting you. All you are is a reminder of the past. Now, what were you doing around the Moffats? Visiting Shirley. We planned a day together. Likely story. It's the truth. I don't believe you. I don't give a toss what you believe. How long have you known me, eh? You honestly think I'd get mixed up in taking someone's kids off them? So you were playing happy families around the Moffats then? Look, mate, there's no love lost between me and you lot. I don't pretend otherwise. But I don't want to see some innocent little lad getting here to settle some mad score. I still don't believe you. Like I said, I couldn't care less. You want to know why I want to see a Robbie Adam? Well, that's what I've been asking you, innit? Because I know what loss feels like. I know what it's like to be separated from the person you love most in the world. And even though your precious sister's turned her back on me, I wouldn't want it or anyone else to go through what I have the past few months. Do you think it's been easy for me not being able to talk to your Jackie? Ed and Clint were all I had in the whole world. Imagine how you feel if you lost Rachel. All right, I believe you. Bigger, yeah? Yeah. Take your jacket. I'll try and call that ambulance again. I can't see him, yeah. Don't worry. He did the left up ahead. He's going nowhere without us. Hang back a bit, Tim. Can't let him spot us. Oh, too late. Oh, nice one. Now what? Get on his tail! Hold on, Lindsay. He's never gonna lead us to Harry when we're breathing down his neck. You should make up your mind. Look at this, Ray. We're gonna get picked up by the busies. Hey, Tim, are you in short for this? Oh, yeah. Fully calm. Shut up, will ya? Just need to think. Keep him in your sights, Tim, lad. So how do we know that you haven't got him? Because I'm telling you. Well, someone's got him. He hasn't just disappeared into thin air. I'm as worried about Harry as anyone else in this room. Well, they could be crocodile tears for all we know. And what about you? Harry's the child you loved so very much you sold him to my sister. Who are you anyway? You know, I don't know what you're capable of or how far you go to get what you want. I love those children. They're all I've got left of Susanna. I wouldn't hurt them for the world. You'd hurt us, though, wouldn't you? When I found out you were getting married, I was upset. I didn't think you'd want me around. OK, you might tolerate me for a few months, but sooner or later you'd want to get on with your own lives, just you and the children. And where would that have left me? But we always said you could see the children any time you wanted. Yeah, until you started making wild accusations and accusing me of all sorts. I was afraid. All I've got left of Susanna are those kids. I'm not married. I have a few friends. Disappointed that Max chose me before you got the chance to replace your sister, were you? I did think you wouldn't want me around, and I was right. I just didn't want someone looking over our shoulder all the time, judging how we were bringing up Harry and Emma. Sticking their nose in where it wasn't wanted. Yeah, if you like. Well, for what it's worth, I think you've done a good job with both the children since Susanna died. Better than I would have managed. I'd never have guessed the way you've been carrying on. I know, and I'm sorry. I suppose I've taken out all that pain and anger I felt about Susanna's death on you. I know it was difficult for everyone when she died, but she was my only sister. Both of you had people you could turn to. I was all on my own. That's why I behaved like I did, making those stupid accusations. I just wanted someone to acknowledge my loss. It was never our intention to cut you out of the children's lives. I realise that now. And all I can do is apologise. Look, the main thing is that we just get Harry back. Screw this. I've got another idea. Oh, what are you on? This is a shortcut. You want to catch him, don't you? Yeah, and I want to be 
you alive when I do? See? There he is. I've got him and he knows it. Do you want one? Get after him! I can't. He won't have it. He's just great. He's playing her. He's going to get away. That's what we want him to think. Lisa was right. I sold Harry. You don't give away something as precious as a child. That was years ago. There's no connection between that and what's happened now. Isn't there? Don't you think we're made to pay for our past mistakes? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'm the one carrying the debt. What do you mean? What have you ever done to deserve this? Something far worse than selling a child. I don't think there is anything worse. Jackie, I think it's time you found out something about the kind of man that I am. But, Max, I know all about the affairs and the women. You're not that man anymore, are you? No. I'm not. Search him. Get off! No, there's nothing there. What were you expecting? Your master plan for kidnapping Jackie's little brat? You've got him. We know you have. Look, I'm telling you what I told Katie. I haven't. So why'd you run then? It's this funny little habit I've got, but when I see people running towards me with baseball bats, I get this weird idea that they want to batter me. Listen, you, you know, Mark. I'll give you two seconds to tell us where he is. Or Tim here. He's going to knock seven shades of the brown stuff out of you. How many times? I haven't got him. Oh, don't lie. I'm not. Got a mate looking after him, have you? Hey, or is he on his own? Listen, you can batter me all you like, but I can't tell you because I've got nothing to do with it. Right, you've had your chance. For the last time. I can't tell you what I don't know. We'll see about that. Tim, do him. No! Ah! Where are you going? To find my son. But the police said we should stay here. Well, I don't give a toss. I want my son back. <laughs> Maybe he's telling the truth. I am. He's lying. Even if he is, he's not going to tell us, is he? Tim's right. Short of sticking bamboo under his fingernails, he's not going to come to it. Hey! Oh, look. To that kid, your meat. I'll take good care of her, Ron. I promise. They still after you? <sighs> they did what they wanted to. Left me for dead. If that kid comes to any harm, the scum that took him, the dead. Is it because I'm so tired about being punished or something? Brookside's back Friday at 8.30 and next Wednesday at 8.30, a brand new series of Location, Location, Location. Back to tonight and up next, call Blimey. It's a tribute to the Carry On Girls.
gonna fall? What are we gonna do? The fire brigade. Louis! What number flat is it, you? Oh, how should I know? You know, all right. Fire brigade. Louis! Quick. Lindsay, top floor on the right. Get up there. Go on. Okay, they'll find him. And what if they don't? <laughs> if anything happens to that kid, you're meat. What kid? What are you talking about? Harry, you lying beauty! <laughs> <laughs> Kid comes to any arm. The scum that took him. The dead. Don't move! Come on. Come on, please. Come on, Lynn. Don't be frightened. We're here to help you. You sure this is right flat? I hope so. Stand back. Let me have a go. In. Okay. Easy. Stay there, Harry. Don't move. Max Farnham. They found him. Oh. Yeah, and he's safe and well. Um, yes, that's fantastic. Um, we'll meet you there. Yes, we'll be as quick as we can. Bye. Emma, they found Harry, and he's safe and well. Come on. Well, where is he? They've taken him to the hospital. Max, what's wrong with him? It's all right, they're just checking him out. Oh. Come on, he's fine. Here we are. Jackie, come on. Jackie, where is he? He's with the police. So can you phone our mic and tell everyone that's looking for him that they found him and he's alive? Oh. So what happened to Robbie? He said he knew nothing about Harry. Liar. And he got off before the busies got here. Yeah, well, he would, wouldn't he? Leaving the kid to die. You know, I was just about to get him, then I had this nightmare flash. I was going to drop him. Did the job, though, didn't you? Saved the kid. Hey, we did the job. Yeah, I've still got the bruises to prove it. Oh, so have I. Make it right there, don't we? Hey, hang on. Not the only one with bruises, you know. What about my head? I never saw you. I know, the line butte went down like a sack of spuds. I didn't think, did I? You know, just went for it. Never had a chance to calm myself down first. Went right off the scale. Only just getting back to normal. Five, six, six and a half. I'm getting there. <laughs> You okay, Dad? Yeah, yeah. Just a bit too much excitement for one day. Oh. I can't believe he's here. I can't believe we've got him back. Such a brave boy, haven't you, eh? Such a big, brave boy. Your dad was going ballistic on the phone. He was over the moon when he found Harry, though. How long's my text going to be? She'll be here any minute. Stand on for that, Jackie. I think I'll go and wait some size. Not in person. Yeah, I know. It's not me when you come out, so I'll only be in the way. It's up to you, you know that. Thanks no words to me. All right. Oh, yeah. Is Harry OK? Yeah, he's fine. Max has just given the police some details. 
What are you doing here? Well, my dad told me where you were. Um, Katie had an accident. She had to go to casualty. What's been going on? Nothing. Don't worry about it. All that matters is you've got Harry back. Come here. Poor Jackie. And Anne. And Max. But they were terrified. And little Harry. They were looking everywhere for him. In the woods and everything. And I was just stuck in the I had to wait for the news until he phoned. But when they rang and said that they found him, oh, I was made up. I bet. And all I've been doing is shopping. If I was here, I could have helped. Oh. See ya. See ya. Yeah. So what happened then? Well, we went after Robbie Moffat and give him a good eye, didn't we? <laughs> and he liked it on us. <laughs> Took us straight to where the kid was. Hey, um, do us a favour, get that takeaway card by the phone, will you? Might as well have a Chinese to celebrate, eh? Sounds good to me. And to me. Certainly don't feel like cooking after today. Um, do us a favour, go round and get it, will you? Give us all a chance to get cleaned up. Uh, yeah, if you want. There you go, that should be enough. I could um, ring up and get a banquet if you like. Yeah, whatever you choose. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what does it feel like to have a big hero for a daughter, eh? Oh, come on, I don't do what any mother would have done. Oh, father. Yeah. Go after Robbie Moffat. Well, there was a child's life at stake. I was wound up, that's all. I just kept thinking I would have felt if it had been Kylie. I'd be the same if it was Wills. I'd be in bits. Oh, yeah. Can I put an order in, please? Hey. What about this? Whose is that? That Moffat device. Fell out of his pocket. Oh, yeah. Hey, and look at this. Bingo. Just with the three ways. Now nah, you're all right. You keep it. Well, I'll pay for the Chinese, then, eh? I'll sort that. You spend it on you and Emily. You could do with a lucky touch for a change. Yeah, and you deserve it after today. Come here, love. What a relief for you. Oh, don't tell me about it. Involving car chases and all kinds. Oh, I am sorry for trying to save my nephew's life. I missed all the exciting stuff anyway. Oh, where is he? Let's have a look at him. Oh! Come here, mate. <sighs> Listen, I never thought that I'd hear myself say this. Because you know what I've always thought of you. So you marrying our Jacqueline with my blessing was never going to happen, was it? Only seeing you two together when Harry was missing. Seeing how you stood by each other, how much you loved each other. Well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Who am I to stand in your way? So good luck to the pair of you, and I hope that you have a long and happy life together. Oh, thanks, Dad. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'll take good care of her, Ron. I promise. What have you come round here for? I just wanted to see how you were. I'm OK. No, thanks to you. You could have killed me with that car. I know, and I'm sorry, I really am. But you were behind me. I couldn't see you. I had to try and get away fast, didn't I? Look what they ended up doing to me. And they robbed me and all. Are they still after you? They did what they wanted to. Left me for dead. Well, have you told the police? They wouldn't want to know, would they? Do you around here, you know? Asking me if I'd taken Harry. Asking you? I told them where to get off. But you know what else they asked me? If I thought you'd taken him. Did you lie to me? Well, Katie, I've told you, and it's gospel. I didn't take that kid. You need to get yourself cleaned up. I know, but I didn't want to go to my mum's looking like this. She'll only get in a state. Maybe you'd better come in and sort yourself out here. Tower block. Hmm? We thought he'd lost us, but we were too good for him. Thank goodness. Well, at least he got a good pasting. I tell you what, I wish I would have been there. I would have kicked his head in. And that would have really helped your dad in court, that, wouldn't it? Hey? The owl fella kills one brother and you kick the other one's head in. <laughs> Talk about a family feud. Prosecution would have loved that, wouldn't he? To be honest, I 
He's a right mess here. What about me mum? They've had it here and all, a woman. Yeah, and everyone knows it's not right hitting women, don't they? Once I hit Jackie, that's all, when I was provoked. These three went for me mum in cold blood. You still hit her. If anything, it was you started all this. Yeah, and that's all anyone ever wants to talk about, isn't it? The fact that I hit her. No one ever talks about what she did to me. Like what? She swore blind to me that there was nothing between her and Max Farnham, and now she's marrying him. Look, I swear, Katie, I would never have hit her, honest. Not unless she drove me to it. That is still no excuse. Look, I don't blame you for taking sides. You used to go back a long way. I'm not taking a side. She never told me about her and Max either. She might well have just been using her, that's what she's like. Hey, I bet Max and Jackie are doing somersaults now they've got Ali back safe and sound. Yeah, but I bet we won't hear a word of thanks from her, the snobby cow. She should do. For us taking on Robbie Moffat. I was well impressed with you two. Yeah, well, don't be. The way you two were carrying on. You work in a bar for peanuts, and you have to wear them stupid sweatshirts in the garage. You could both be out in and real money. Been there, done that. Well, you've got the know-how then, haven't you? And the bottle. Listen, we did what we did for little Harry's sake. Not to line our own pockets. Well, come on. You're a pot man. You could be raking it in. A couple of jobs a month and you'd be minted. So why don't you go for the easy money? Easy money? My lad, little Jimmy, he's dead because he thought he could make easy money. Yeah, and I've already been there. And it lost me my friends and my business. And my dream future I've mapped out for myself. And when we were kids growing up, my dad was never there for us half the time, were you? No, because I was paying the price for all that easy money. Always comes at a price, just you remember that. And how are you two? Hi. Uh, we've come round to say a massive thank you. Ah, oh, that's nice of you. Where is the lucky little fella? <laughs> oh, Anthea's just giving him a bath, letting him have a splash, you know, try and get him back to normal. And we wanted to thank your Lindsay and Tim and all. Oh, my told us all you'd done to get Harry back safe. Fair enough, nice one. Telling yourselves, as long as you don't mind us guts and the Chinese. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Oh, you kids, look at that. Good timing, all. So, Robbie Moffat's had the kid all along, eh? Looks like. Have the police been told? They have, yeah. Proving it'll be a different matter, though. Do you want to hear the other good news? Apart from Harry being found. Go ahead. Robbie got a good kicking. So at least he's had some comeback, even if the busies can't pin nothing on him. And who gave him this good kicking, like? Not you. No, I was nowhere near. Well, who did? Jimmy Corkill, Lindsay and Tim. Who'd have thought it, eh? That last saving my grandson's life. And doling out street justice. Wish I'd have known, you know. They could have given him a good kick from me. Toe rag. Right, grub up. There you go, kids. Come on, Dad, let me do that. Oh, we wouldn't want to put you to any trouble, then. No problem, we've got loads here. Look, you've not eaten, we've not eaten. Get stuck in. Come on, celebration banquet time. Well, to be honest with you, I'm rather hungry. <sighs> yeah, so am I. I couldn't eat a thing all day. I'm surprised you've had your heart in your mouth. <sighs> Certainly was. That has got to be the worst experience of my life. When he rang to say he found him, just before they said he was OK. That split second felt like a lifetime. I'm sure my heart missed the beast, I really am. Well, as to Harry, eh? Home safe and sound. Well, I suppose we should be raising a toast to you three, because from what Mike was saying, hadn't it been for your efforts, we wouldn't have got him back. Yeah, well, we only did what anyone else would have done. Yeah, but the Dixons and the Core Hills, we've had our differences in the past, haven't we? Especially me and you. Let's just hope we can put that behind us now, eh? And thanks a million times for saving Harry. Yeah. Well, cheers. 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 <laughs> Do you know what? If I'd known how two-faced Jackie Dixon was in the first place, I would never have got involved with it. Ah, Clint did right picking you, didn't he? What do you mean? Well, because of who you are, what you like. Dead straight, honest, a genuine person. Everything that Jackie Dixon isn't. Ah, oh, Clint was lucky having you. Except he never got a chance to appreciate you, though, did he? Not for long enough, anyway. I really miss him, you know. So do I. And every time I think of him, I see Ron Dixon gunning him down in cold blood. And I want to kill him. For our Clint's sake. But then I have to stop myself. Because that's not what our Clint would have wanted. 
Either wanted to see Dixon up in court, doing the time for doing the crime. But it's hard, Casey, living without him. He meant the world to me. It was the best, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Couldn't have wanted better. Look, I'm sorry for landing on you like this. I'll get off. I'll have to go to my mum's. See, she's all right. I hope she is. I hope they haven't been back. Yeah, well, they'll be murdered if they have. Robbie! I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. You should be going to the police, not trying to sort things out yourself all the time. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Promise me you won't do anything stupid. I promise. Look, I'll see you. Thanks. <laughs> All I did was what I thought was right at the time. What about Beth, though? What if we'd have come back and you weren't here and you never come back? Robbie Moffat could have run you down in that car, not Katie. You could have been killed. Honestly, Rachel, I was careful. And I always will be, I promise you. Look, I love you and Beth too much to risk my life for anything. All I'm saying is I know what it's like to lose a dad. And I can't bear the thought of our Beth having to go through the same. Oh, it was nice of them, wasn't it, inviting us in to eat like that? Yeah, I suppose, apart from me having to lick Lindsay's boots. <laughs> I'll get over it, though. Right. I should go for the kids, eh? No, I'll ring my dad. He'll bring them round. Max, what a day. Oh. It makes you realise how much you, you love your children, though. Robbie? What's up? Scared, are you? Terrified, like me mum was. Max, quick, found the police. Scared for your life, like me mum was. Robbie, stop it. Make your way for your precious little Harry. Will you leave us alone, please? I haven't even started yet. Hello, police. Yeah, we're being attacked. Uh, Max Farnham, Seven Brookside Close. My brother's dead because of you. Me mum's been battered. And what about my son being kidnapped? Yeah, so I heard. Well, maybe now you know how I felt, losing someone I love. You little scumbag kidnapping a kid like that. Yeah, well, at least they haven't shot anyone. Who the hell do you think you are, coming in here and terrorising people? Shut it, will you, Grandad? I wasn't talking to you! Listen, Jackie, you might think you hate me now, but this is just the beginning. Believe me, every corner you ever turn around, I'll be there. Waiting for you, reminding you, you and your murdering our fella. And you can tell them that from me. It's all right now. The police are on the way. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I mean, why us? Why me? Is it because I sold Harry? Am I being punished or something? Well, what's happened if you'd have got caught, eh? Going after him with a baseball bat, you'd have ended up back in prison. I wasn't going to get caught, though, was I? You let yourself get dragged in, now. Only because there was a kid missing. I'll get it. Hello. Look. Speaking? I might have been doing it for the kid in the beginning. Who's this? But we had a little result, though. Where did you get this? It's Robbie Moffat's. I had to give our names and addresses into the police. Mm -hmm. I had it on me all the time. I was bricking it. There's nearly 90 quid here. Easy money, eh? All right. Yeah, right. Thanks very much. Bye. Who was that? It was the police. What do you want? Well, they were on about Harry being kidnapped. Do you want me and Tim to go down to the station? What for? So they can, like, give you a medal for saving them and that? Well, they want us to go in for questioning. Reckon we've got to explain how we knew where Harry was. You what? And what about Robbie Moffat? Why aren't they taking him in? Is someone gonna tell me what I'm supposed to have done or what? OK, but hurry. Oh, that's great. Thanks very much for your help. Bye. 
Who's that? Uh, the family liaison officer. They've contacted a break-in firm. Get the window boarded up as soon as possible. Let us know when they've taken Robbie in for questioning. <sighs> How could I ever be so wrong about someone? Well, some people are like that. They show one face to the public and another in private. I talk about Jacqueline Hyde. You know, when I first met him, I thought he was really nice, dead gentle. And it turns out all he wants to do is hurt people. He's terrified me dad and Anthea and our Mike. He bullied his brother. He battered me. He snatched Harry. And now he comes back round here trying to terrify us again. All it is with Robbie is violence on top of violence. You know, my stomach turns over thinking about what he might do next. You know, the biggest letter I've ever had was finding out what he was like before I married him. And at least I've got you now instead. The last thing I need in my life is another violent man. Jackie, after everything you've been through with Robbie and all the violence that you've talked about, and that thing about showing one face to the world and another one in private, well, I am one of those people. Robbie's not the only violent man in your life. I'm the same, I'm afraid. Worse, even. Much worse. After what I've done and knowing what I'm like, this is really difficult for me to say. But I'm not the man that you should be marrying. I know I'm not. I think that we should take a step back and just call the whole thing off. Giving it to Robbie. You know, he tries to freak us out. Next thing you know, you're cancelling the wedding. You're trying to stitch me up, Mr. Holden. I'm trying to give you the chance to confess. Do you think that I'm one of them wives who doesn't mind being left in the dark as long as she gets money thrown at her now and again? Seems cruel not to tell them when we had the chance. Yeah, and it's even more cruel to cancel my wedding without a proper explanation. Well, let's hope an explanation is forthcoming in Tuesday's Brookside at 8 o'clock. Friday comedy begins next tonight on 4 with an armadillo, Santa and Superman telling the story of Hanukkah in Friends. when they get here. And spoil Harry's birthday party. He won't understand. And when they ask why I'm cancelling my wedding for the second time in a year, what do we tell them? Well, just tell them it's for the best. I don't think it is for the best. Well, I say it is. Tell me why. I can't. It just looks like we're giving in to Robbie. You know, he tries to freak us out. Next thing you know, you're cancelling the wedding. But it's not to do with Robbie. Why are you letting him win? Letting him get what he wants? He's locked up now, so he can't do us any more harm. I've told you, it's nothing to do with him. It's me. I'm just the same as him, deep down. So why can't you just accept that? Because I don't think it's true. It's just an excuse. <sighs> I've got three statements, so you drove straight to the flat. Well, they're lying. <laughs> Why would they lie? Why would I lead them to the flat? Look, if I just kidnapped someone and I was trying to get away, I'd have to be stupid to take them to the place where they had the kid locked up, wouldn't I? Well, maybe you are stupid. But it won't take you long to pin all this on me, then, will it? Or maybe you were just scared. Too scared to think straight. You don't argue with a baseball bat. You were scared, you knew they were onto you, your bottle went and you led them straight to your little safe house. I've never been anywhere near those flats. But it wasn't a safe house, was it, Robbie? Little Harry Farnham nearly died there. Look, I was scared. I just met up with Katie Rogers when Tim O'Leary and the Corkills turned up carrying baseball bats. So I legged it. I jumped in my car and I tried to get away. 
But they caught up with me in some back alley off the dock road, and that's where they started laying into me. You've got no witnesses. I've got the bruises. No one saw it happen down this back alley. Did anyone see it happen near the flats? We're making inquiries. You've got no witnesses either. It's my word against theirs. Hannah. Hi, Jimmy. How's Harry? Oh, he seems fine. It's as if nothing happened. Too young to realise, I suppose. That's his birthday today. Is it, guy? I'm just nipping around the parade to get some sticky tape for his present. Oh, yeah, I've got a rolling house. You can borrow. Oh, it'll only take me two minutes. No, you're OK. I've got loads. Come on. Are you sure? Yeah, no probs. Oh, Ron was supposed to buy some this morning, but you know what he's like. Well, he's got a load on his mind, hasn't he? Yeah. You and him getting on all right now? Yeah. Good. I mean, if what happened to Harry proves anything, it's the family should stick together. You're talking to someone in the middle of a very messy divorce. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... No, you're all right. I know what you meant. Do you want to come in? Uh, I better not. Suit yourself. How's the divorce going? I'm on pins, to be honest with you. Got a report due any day now. What kind of report? Should say who gets custody of wills. Are you hopeful? Who would you give custody to? The man or the woman? The bipolar, manic, depressive? Or the long-suffering saint? Up to a few weeks ago, I wouldn't have hesitated. We're going in with a chance now. You're a good dad, Jimmy. Why not? Thanks, Alf. Is it to do with Lisa? No. What's she been saying? I take no notice of Lisa. Are you sure? Yeah. You haven't started to think she might be right? No. Max, you don't think this wedding's all part of a scheme to get Harry back to you? No. Because, Max, if it was just about Harry, I could fight it in court for him. I wouldn't have to marry you. I know that. But... I want you, I want Harry and Emma. I want it all. I want us to be a family. No, I know, but I just don't think it'll be a good idea. But we've been getting on well, haven't we? Yes, but... Well, Max, it doesn't make sense. Look, look, they're here now. Let's just tell them it's off and get it over and done with. Max, please don't. The sooner we tell them, the better. Look, I deserve a proper explanation first. You owe me that, at least. So give me one good, solid, proper reason for calling it off before you tell anyone. Why did you go to the Farnham's last night? You know why? Is it true you smashed their window? It was an accident. Is it true you shouted at him? I raised my voice a little bit, yeah. What did you shout? I can't remember. Maybe now you know what I felt like. Did you shout that? Might have done. And what did you mean by it? She lost her son for a couple of hours. My mum's lost hers forever. Oh, so you did it to make her understand what that felt like? I didn't do it. This is just the start. Did you shout that? I might have done. And what did you mean by it? There's a long way to go. Weeks to the trial. <laughs> no, you didn't. You were talking about the kidnapping, weren't you? I was talking about the trial. I've got Harry once, I can get him again. Did you say that? No. Are you sure? Yes. Well, I've got statements say you did. Well, they're lying. And that's no surprise, because they hate me, and they hate me family. And if this ever does go to court, my brief will have no problem in proving that they hate me. Statements off Jackie Dixon and Max Farnham mean nothing. They'll tell any old story to get me sent down. Robbie, the neighbours heard you say it as well. The neighbours couldn't have heard me say it. Because I didn't say it. You're trying to stitch me up, Mr Holden. No, I'm trying to give you the chance to confess. I didn't do it. I don't believe you. If that kid had recognised me, you'd have charged me by now. If you had any impartial witnesses who saw me near those flats, you'd have charged me. I didn't kidnap Harry Farnham, Mr Holden. And you can't prove that I did. <sighs> Sound a bit fed up there, kiddo. I'm bored. Tim! Got a girl out here says she's bored. Think you should be doing something about it. What do you want to do, eh? Something exciting. <laughs> We've had our fill of excitement for one week, haven't we, Jim? Yeah. 
But while you two were flying around the city rescuing kids, I was stuck in the salon doing pims. Eh, uh, you'd have been proud of him if you'd been there, kid. Yeah, well, I wasn't, was I? Hey! What's up with you, eh? You should have took me with you. Don't you think I need to ask your permission? No, but you could have rang. Do you know what we went through yesterday? I don't want to know. It's all everyone's gone on about in the salon all morning. I don't want to know how much of a hero you are. There you go. 45 quid. What for? Go out and buy yourself something nice for tonight. Why? What's happening tonight? I'm taking you out. Can't see you, Robbie Moffat. Tim, do you think that I'm one of them wives who doesn't mind being left in the dark as long as she gets money thrown at her now and again? No. Nope. Good. <laughs> Flippin' now! Not Grandad again! <laughs> He's hopeless at this game, isn't he, kids? Oh, <laughs> this is too energetic for me. I'm gonna have to go out and get some fresh air. Listen, don't you go blowing them candles out till I get back, do you hear? Come on, Mr. <laughs> DJ, with our music. Here we go. You alright, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Just not in for the party. Yeah, that's over now, sis. You've got him back safe and sound. That's right. Why didn't you come with us? Well, go shopping. Yeah? No. Nah. What's the matter? Not exciting enough for you? Emily, if you want me to take it out tonight, you better pack all this sulking in right now. I'll see you later. Hi, love. Oh, yeah. I was just on my way out. Oh, uh, it's all right, love. It's the other fellow I wanted to see, to be honest. Oh, I'll leave you two to it. What do you want? Uh, I've come round to say thanks, actually. For what? For what you did yesterday. Oh, forget it. Yeah, well, nevertheless, if you hadn't found Addy when you did, I dread to think what would have happened. Step in. Miss Dixon? Yeah? Jacqueline Dixon. Yeah, what's happened? D.I. Holden. Can I come in? Well, we're in the middle of a kid's birthday party. It is about Robbie Moffat. It just tells what's happened. Yeah, um, I'm afraid we've had to release him without charge. I just want you to know that I'm grateful. Really grateful. Well, we only did what anyone would do. Mm. He saved my grandson's life. Now, that doesn't make us quits, Jimmy, but it's something, you know what I mean? Yeah. I won't forget it. How do we about our Jacqueline? And we both think, well, I've brought a couple of invitations to our wedding, if you fancy it, it's tomorrow. It's just for the night, do like. Thanks. Well, it's all about interpretation. I mean, he claims that any threats he made were about your father's forthcoming trial. And there's nothing in your original statements that conclusively contradicts that. Now, if we take this to court, his brief will just argue that, well, you misunderstood him. We've nothing else at the moment. I mean, Harry couldn't identify him. There's no forensic evidence to link him to the flat. And no witnesses saw him anywhere near the place. He led the cork hill straight there. Yeah, and Tim, that's three witnesses. Yeah, well, he denies that. So it's his word against theirs. And they're far from irreproachable, if you ask me. Plus the fact he has got some mitigating circumstances in his favour. What circumstances? Well, he was quite badly beaten up. Look, I can probably get him for criminal damage to your window if you want to press charges. And would you go down for that? <laughs> no. Then what's the point? Well, up to you. Think about it. Let me know. But he's dangerous. He's a violent man. He's gonna kill someone the way he's going. He should be locked up. We need something else before we can make a kidnapping charge stick. Well, he admitted it. He said, I kidnapped Harry and I'll, I'll do it again the first chance I get. That's exactly what he said. You didn't put that in your original statement. Yeah, well, I've only just remembered. So you want to change your statement? Yeah, now go and arrest him. Look, if this goes to court, you'll be asked under oath why you changed your statement. You know that, don't you? You'll be cross-examined by a trained barrister. He'll rip both of your statements apart. It'll be like a dog with a bone. Like, you stand up to that in front of a jury? 
Listen, Mr. Farnham, I'm really sorry. But between you and me, I think he did it. Well, then why don't you do something about it? I just haven't got the proof yet. But I will have. He's a cocky yet, but I'll have him. I hope so. Look, he's been warned to stay away from you and your property. But if he does turn up here, give us a ring. I'll have him straight back in. And if either of you want to change your statements, you know what I am. Afternoon, sir. Yeah. Who's that? The police have released Robbie. They've what? Hey, I don't believe you people. What are you letting a psycho like that back out onto the streets for? Wrong. The children will hear you. You've let him go, haven't he? Well, for now. Well, they said they, uh, they know it's him, but uh, it's just a matter of time. And so when? He says another kidnap. Mike. Is Jackie all right? I'll go and check on her. In the meantime, we can carry on with these party games, can't we, kids? Yeah. We've done past the parcel, we've done musical chairs. Now what can we play? Tell you what, I'll a game of hide and seek. Don't be stupid. Sorry. Bad idea. You OK? I don't think we'd get away with it. We can talk his way out of anything. He hasn't got away with it yet. He's out walking the streets. The police will get him. It's just a matter of time. He's willing, Rach. He won't dare come anywhere near you now. <sighs> he doesn't have to anymore. Everything's going his way. No, it's not. It is. He doesn't want me to be happy. That's why he's doing this. That's why he kidnapped Harry, why he put us through hell. And it's worked. Don't let it work. It's too late. <laughs> it already has. Max doesn't want to marry me anymore. A statement you gave us yesterday about following Mr Moffat. Yeah, what about it? Not exactly accurate, was it? He? he led us straight to them flats. He knew exactly where Harry was. If you somehow failed to mention that you assaulted him with a baseball bat and that then you forced your way into his mother's house and assaulted her. Listen, mate, Harry Farnham nearly died. We got there with seconds to spare. There wasn't time to be polite. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. And I know why you did it. If it had been my kid or my neighbour's kid, I might well have done the same thing myself. The thing is, you can't go around taking the law into your own hands. Well, you lot weren't exactly doing much, were you? Tim, shut up. You should listen to this fella, Tim. You might learn something. Aggravating a police officer's never a good idea. Especially if you're just about to get off an assault charge. What do you mean? He's not pressing charges. No. Neither's his mother. <laughs> well, we know why that is, don't we? Yeah, I know. Why? He kidnapped Harry. And he knows that if he presses charges against us, that might just open up the whole can of worms. So you got away with it for now. But I'm warning you, I don't want any more of this vigilante stuff. Why does Robbie have to spoil everything for me? I should never clap eyes on him. I was meeting him in Bennett's home, that was the start of the whole Nathan fiasco. I started to think that maybe there were other lads out there who I'd have more in common with. I started to wonder about Nathan. I used to look at Robbie and I could see him with my kids, you know, kicking the ball around and giving them shoulder rides. But I could never quite picture Nathan like that. Can you picture Max? I've seen Max. Max really is my son's dad and he's a good one too. That's the point, isn't it? Because I know what most people think. I'm only marrying Max because of Harry. My dad definitely thinks it. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be close to your son. See? Even you think it as well, don't you? That's not what I said. Ask anyone round here. What's the first thing that comes to mind when they think of Jackie Dixon? And you know what they'll say? She sold her baby. There's only one man alive who really believes I did the right thing back then, and that's Max. No, Jack, you're being too hard on yourself. And then... Yesterday, when Harry went missing, I've never known anything more real in my life. I was absolutely terrified. And it was Max that I clung to, and he clung to me. And I've never felt closer to him, and I've never felt more like a proper mother. And then there was a moment yesterday when Max was hugging me, and this thought came into my head. If we don't get Harry back, 
Will I still want to marry this man? And that's when I knew. Because if Harry's is... Well, if the worst thing has happened, I don't need Max more than ever. He's the only one who could have got me through it. I need him, Rach. I need that man. I've got no one else. You've got loads of people. You've got your friends, your family. Yeah, but Casey's gone. Dad and Abich have gone. My dad might be going to prison and my mum lives miles away. But you've got me. I know, Rach. And you're a brilliant friend and I know I'd only have to ring you and you'd be round in no time. Too right, I would. But then you go back home to Mike and Beth and I'd be on my own again. You won't be on your own for long, Jack. You're young, gorgeous, successful. I can't cancel another wedding. A cancelled wedding is better than a bad marriage. Rach, it wouldn't be a bad marriage. I belong here in this house. I want to marry Max and live here with my family. Jackie? Shall I tell him to go away? Hi, you okay? Um, you coming down soon? Uh, Harry's desperate to lose his cake, aren't you, son? Hey. All I'm saying is, he knew we'd done it. He knew we battered Robbie and still he turned a blind eye. So? So he's a busy. And if a busy takes no notice of the law, why should we? Look, in certain circumstances, sometimes you have to ignore the law to get justice. But once you start ignoring the law just because you're short of a few bob, you're on the slippery slope. I've been on that slope. And believe me, once you're on it, it's hard to get off. Got it? Oh, we're off now, Max. Oh, right. Leave you two alone. You must have masses to do before the big day. Yeah. Hey, they're not the only ones. I've got my speech to write. Uh, Ron, there's no need to go to so much trouble. You're joking, aren't you? It's not every day my daughter gets married. Not every six months or so she gets engaged, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you are going to go through with this one, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I hope so. Ron, don't embarrass the girl. I'm only kidding. I'll see you in the morning, Jack. Thanks, Rach. If you need anything, I'll be around in no time. Thanks. Best of luck for tomorrow. Thanks. See you, love. See ya. Seems cruel not to tell them when we had the chance. Yeah, and it's even more cruel to cancel my wedding without a proper explanation. What have you been doing? I've just been on the phone to my mum, but I'm ready now. What do you think? You spent 45 quid on that? Yeah, in the sale, it should have been 80. Why don't you like it? Yeah, it's all right. Hey, it's not easy finding something for 45 pounds nowadays. You know, this was a bargain. Right, I'm off to work. Listen, if you kids are out late, don't be making a racket when you come in, will you? All right, see you later, Jim. Yeah, enjoy yourselves and don't do anything I wouldn't do. I'd like to spend 45 quid on a bit of an alvest. Hey, I hate that. So, where's your mum anyway? She's all right. Did she ask about me? No. Yeah, well, next time she calls, tell her I didn't ask about her, eh? I don't know if I miss her, you know. I wish I could go over and see you for a couple of days. So why don't you? Because you haven't got the money. And by the end of tonight, we'll have spent all of what we got out of Robin Moffat's wallet. And tomorrow, we'll be back to square one again. Look, don't worry about money. If you want to go to Brussels, just do it. I'll get you the money. When? Soon. <laughs> Talk's cheap. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Robbie's probably out there now watching us. Don't think so. Can you imagine how happy he'll be if we call off the wedding? I can't get married just to spite Robbie Moffat. I'm not gonna let this go, Max. I want to know why you've changed your mind. Better you don't. How can it be better? It just is. It's Robbie, isn't it? It's got to be. Are you scared of him? I'm scared of what he's capable of, but... That's not the problem. So what is? It's me. It's what I'm capable of. Robbie hit me. I know. So what are you saying? You think you might do the same? Worse. Well, I don't believe you. I've told you I can be a violent man when I'm pushed. No, you're lying. It's true. I know you, Max. You're gentle and you're sensitive. Thought that of Robbie at first. And I can't be wrong again. Well, you are. Max, you're nothing like him. 
If you're a violent man, then every man on the planet must be violent. Maybe they are. Oh, so I can never marry anyone and feel safe? Well, I don't know about that. So I'll die a lonely spinster or a battered housewife? I just know you wouldn't be safe with me. No, it's an excuse. What is the real reason why you don't want to marry me? It's to do with me, isn't it? No. Something I've done? No. Well, have you gone off me? No. Well, is there someone else? It's me! You wouldn't be safe with me! Because you're a violent man when pushed? Yes. Well, come on then, Max. Get violent. Stop it. See, you can't do it, can you? Jackie. It is to do what Lisa says, isn't it? No. It's to do with Harry. You think I'm only after Harry? I don't. You think that I'm selfish? No, I love you. And why won't you marry me? I'm trying to protect you. Tell me the truth, Max. If you're going to make me look like a loser in front of everyone, I want to know what you're doing here. I'm a killer! That's why. I killed Susanna. Touchy jabs. Try going straight in. What's that got to say? I hated her. I wanted to kill her. And I pushed her. This could be the passport for a better life for us. The start of something big. It's up to me to sort things out. How? I had myself in. To the police. And the drama continues tomorrow night at 8. Next, a trip to Brittany where 40 grand will get you a place in the sun. We shouldn't get married. Well, now you've got your answer. <sighs> no way. No, I don't believe you. It's the truth. You killed Susanna. It's actually a relief to tell someone. So how did you do it? Pushed her down the stairs. Deliberately? Yes. Where are you going? To pack me bags. You've got no chance. Oh, haven't I? No, not unless you tell me where you're going to get the money from. What money? The money for me to go and visit me mum. I told you, I'll get it, and that's all you need to know. And I've told you, I don't like being kept in the dark. Oh, well, we can do it with the lights on. Hey, <laughs> we won't be doing it at all unless you tell me. Oh, yes, we will. Oh, no, we won't. <laughs> hey, come here. <laughs> You're not packing? No. I'm sorry it's turned out like this. Can't have picked them, can I? What's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. First, I get involved with Robbie, and he turned out to be the sort of fellow who hits women. And then I get involved with you, and you turn out to be the sort of fellow who pushes women downstairs. And I could have had such an easy life with Nathan. You let me explain how it happened. I think you're better at. It was the night before she was due to marry Mick. Bonfire night. I knew she was making a mistake. I wanted to talk her out of it, so... I came here, to this house. Well, it turned out the wedding was already off. Mick had found out about her affair. I was delighted. I thought I was in with a chance. Seems her betrayal of Mick made things equal. Thought we could wipe the slate clean and start again. We were talking. And I was getting somewhere. That was the thing. I, 
I honestly thought I was getting somewhere. We were out there on the landing. I was standing here. And she was standing there. And I told her how much I loved her. How much she meant to me. And I told her that we were meant to be together. That I changed and that I would never let her down again. And she told me that she still loved me. I could see it in her eyes. I knew it was true. My heart leapt and I thought, everything's gonna be all right. She's gonna give me another chance. Then she said, not in a million years. And she laughed in my face. Said that I disgusted her. That she could never, ever trust me again. That I would never change. And I was furious with her because deep down inside I knew she was right. I will probably never change. And that's when I did it. In that split second, I had so much rage. I hated her. I wanted to kill her. And I pushed her. And her heel broke and she fell down the stairs. <sighs> Tina gets his way. And you wouldn't be able to resist. Hey. <laughs> Sam, what did you exactly do to Robbie Murphy? Are you sick of hearing about it? I'm sick of missed out on it, that's all. Mm. So go on. Are you going to tell me? What, the whole of it? Mm-hmm. OK, let me think. Well, we caught up with him by this warehouse. Casey Rogers led us straight to him. <laughs> as soon as he saw us, he knew the game was up. You should have seen his face then. He went white, white as a sheet he was. So we jumped in his car. Versed into Katie and then burnt off. Probably thought he was going to get away, cos I was in this arse shed of a Capri. But you know what I'm like behind the wheel. <laughs> I put my foot right down to the floor and gave it the bifters. But he was getting away and there was nothing I could do about it. Ron's car was going flat out. The windows were rattling and everything. It's like that film, Bullet. Anyway, he was pulling further and further away, so I had to take a chance. Went down this little side street. When I got to the top, there he was, right in front of me. I just managed to cut him off, and then he does the same brick turn and goes in the opposite direction. But that is when we pull out master stroke. See, we let him think he was going to get away, and we just followed him at a distance. And eventually, he pulls up at this block of flats, and that is when we knew we had him. So I jumped out the Capri, and I've got the bat in my hand, and he turns round, sees us, and starts giving it toes. But it's no use. I'm gaining on him all the time. So we run, jump, rugby tackle him. And he falls down to the ground like a sack of spuds. Then Jimmy comes over, gives him a dig. And then I'm standing over him like this. And then I say to him, where's the kid? His bottle's totally gone, by the way, you can see it. And he goes to me, I don't know what you're talking about. And I go, don't you? <laughs> right across the back of his legs. And then he's screaming then. <laughs> and then I go to him again, where's the kid? And he goes, I don't know. And I go, oh, don't you? <laughs> Jab it in his face. There's blood everywhere then, you should see it. So I go to him again, where's the kid? And he goes, I don't know, still no reply. So then I go, wah, wah, wah. You getting off on this? Mm. Yeah. She crawled into the kitchen. She was obviously trying to get to a mobile phone, but she died before she reached it. And that's where I found her. She was just... She's just lying there. You know, I so much wanted to give myself up. But that would have meant the children going into care and... them growing up with the full knowledge that... that their mother was killed. And... the father a killer and... and I couldn't have done that to them. There you go. 
It's Robbie Moffat. Yep, it was with his wallet. So how's this going to get me to Brussels? Contacts. I knew this lad. I was inside with him. He'll buy it off me. There's a large market for it nowadays. I'll ring him tonight, set up a meeting for him tomorrow. And while I'm there, I'll ask him to spread the word. <laughs> spread what word? That tinhead is available for work. Hang on. This lad, does he run some sort of employment agency or something? No, he just knows a lot of people. People who do jobs. Mm, what sort of jobs? All sorts. Touchy jobs? I've tried going straight in. Where's that got to say? You're making a mess of my life. You can't blame yourself like this. What am I going to do? Nothing. You don't have to do anything. It's not your fault. It's up to me to sort things out. How? I have myself in. To the police? Hmm. Yeah, I've got D.I. Holden's number here. I'll give him a ring. What about Sally and Emma? Oh, they've got you now, Chucky. Now I know I can leave them in safe hands. It's time to face the music. You deserve the best, you know. I want to buy you all the best clothes. I want to buy you a car and a big house with a swimming pool. I've got this thing in my head. When I'm 60, I want to come out of the house, see you at the bottom of the garden, in your cosy, next to our swimming pool. We'll have hundreds of our grandkids running round you and splashing about and having a laugh. It's my dream. I'm not going to get it by selling burgers, though, am I? And you're not getting me in my cars at 16, either. <laughs> I'll get you all the cosmetic surgery money can buy. Mm. Mm. Max, hang up. You know, it's too late now. Someone's going to get him. No, look, you haven't thought this through. It's the right thing to do. I've been trying to get on with my life as if nothing happened. That's what us getting married was all about, but it won't work, will it? If you give yourself up, where does that leave me? Free. I can't look after two kids on my own. They'll be better off with you than with me. I'm a violent man. No, you're not. And you going to jail won't do anyone any good. Since I've been out, every job interview I've gone for, I've been treated like muck. <laughs> Only job I did get would have turned into a cabbage if I would have stuck it out. You might get used to it after a while. So you want me to get used to it? You want to be married to a cabbage? No. Yesterday, when I was on the road, with my foot down, it was a buzz. For the first time in months, I really felt alive. Do you remember when we did that credit card then? Yeah. That was a buzz and all, wasn't it? Yeah. Walking into shops and getting whatever we wanted. That's the life for us, Em, don't you think? I don't know. So what's the alternative? To carry on like this, you comb and tat out of old people's hair, and me doing a three pound seventy an hour nine to five job. It's hard to be a successful criminal, though, Tim. Yeah, but it's what I'm qualified to do. I've got the experience and I've got the contacts. This could be the passport for a better life for us. The start of something big. You said a heel broke. That's right. Well, is that what caused her to fall? Yeah, I pushed her. Yeah, but, Max, what actually caused her to fall? Your push or her heel breaking? If her heel hadn't broken, I suppose she could have regained her balance. So it was just an accident, really? Yeah, but if I hadn't pushed her, then her heel wouldn't have broken. But are you sure about that? Jackie, believe you me, I've tried to talk myself out of it a thousand times before, but there's no use getting around the simple fact that I killed her. Max, just leave it. No, I'll be holding me back. Oh, Max, will you just let it ring? I want it all over, Jackie. I want an end to it. We need to think this through first. Hello? Yes. I see. Well, unfortunately, we've had to cancel the wedding. Uh, 
we won't be needing the room anymore. Well, frankly, I've got other things to worry about than caterers and lost deposits. Goodbye. Max, did you mean to kill her? In that one split second, I was so full of rage. I just lashed out. I didn't have any time, really, to think of the consequences. It was just... Pure age. It was just bad luck that you happened to be at the top of the stairs. Why are you trying to make excuses for me? Because I can't see the point in giving yourself up. And there's no point in pretending that it wasn't a crime. It wasn't murder, though. No? No, it was a crime of passion. That's right. Yeah, well, that makes a big difference. Does it? Yeah, you, you just lost your temper. And the woman I loved lost her life. It was an accident, Max. Harry and Emma shouldn't be anywhere near someone with that kind of temper. And neither should you. Come on, Max. We all lose our temper sometimes. Not like that. I lost it on the same night, the night she died. Well, I tried to buy Harry back off her. Well, you'd get him for free if I give myself up. Oh, Max, I don't want that. Listen to me. You know that night when she wouldn't take my money? I went for her, the same as you, pure rage. Now, she could easily have fallen and cracked her head open. And I'd be in the same boat as you now. The only difference between us is that I had my argument with her at the bottom of the stairs. Max, you're not a violent man. You are nothing like Robbie Moffat, nothing like him. It's him who should be locked up, not you. You're kind and you're gentle and you're loving. And I've seen how much you've suffered because of that one moment of madness. I've watched you, driven out your mind. There's no way you'd do anything like that again, is there? No, I don't think so. And after everything you've been through, don't you think you've suffered enough? I mean, why go to jail for it? More to the point, why abandon Harry and Emma for it? They need their father. I need their father. But after everything I've told you, you still think we should get married? I didn't say that. Hello? Yeah, hello, Inspector. Um. It was just to let you know that we won't be um, pressing charges against Robbie Moffat, you know, for breaking the window. It just seems such a petty thing to try and do him on. And we won't be adding anything to the statements that we've already made. Yeah. OK, then. Bye. If you can forgive what happened to Susanna, then... maybe we've still got a chance. You need to forgive yourself first. Well, if you don't live in constant fear of it ever happening again... I know I'm not in any physical danger. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you, Jackie. I know. How do you know? I just do. Because <laughs> you trust me. I know you won't push me down the stairs. Oh, that's incredible. I mean, trust like that is it's just... Well, you must trust me. Yeah, I do, I do, totally. I... Well, maybe it will work. Maybe we... We should get married. I don't know. Why not? Well, there's still one thing that worries me. What? You've been married four times. Twice to Susanna and twice to Patricia. And you were unfaithful to them both with each other. And then it turns out you've done the treble. All along, you've been unfaithful to them both with Faye as well. So... Every time you took marriage vows, be it with Susanna or Patricia, you could never amend them because you were still seeing Faye. But, Max, I thought you changed. I thought Susanna's death had changed you. But you've just told me that Susanna, the woman who probably knew you better than anyone, thought you'd never change. And you've just admitted that she's probably right. So... If you haven't changed, and probably never will change, why should I marry you, Max? <sighs> what if you get caught, though? I won't. <laughs> yeah. Bet you Walton Jail's full of people who said that. Look, if we get caught, I get caught. I've been inside before. Yeah, and it was a nightmare. No, it wasn't. <sighs> it was for me. Yeah, but we got through it, though, didn't we? 
with Tim. Last time it was a few months. This time it could be a few years. I just don't think I'll cope. Yes, you could. You're a lot stronger than I am. <laughs> I'd miss you, though. Yeah, and I'd miss you too. But if I was doing a nine-to-five job, I'd miss you then as well. And that's a life sentence. Only you're doing eight hours at a time. At least this way, we're gonna get to earn a lot more money and spend more time together. And if I do get sent down, it'd be like working abroad or working on the rigs or something. It's all part of the job. And if a man's gonna provide for his wife and kids properly, he's gotta make a few sacrifices now and then. But wouldn't it bother you, our kids now, and that you're a criminal? No. By the time they're old enough to understand, I'd have gone legit. And I would have given up grafting. And I would have become a successful businessman. <laughs> we'll have our big house, and our garden, and our swim pool, and our villa in Spain. And our kids will be as straight as a die. And they'll all grow up to be lawyers, and doctors, and vets, and stuff. Because we were willing to give them the very best start in life. The start that we never had. He'll go to all the best schools. He'll have all the best gear. He won't for nothing. Do you want to know why? Why? Because we were willing to take a bit of a risk now. Because me and you had the guts to go and do something about it now while we're still young. While we still could. I love you, Tim. I love you too. You're the most gorgeous man in the whole world. And you're the most gorgeous girl in the whole world. And we're the most gorgeous kids. Mm -hmm. And the most gorgeous house. Mm -hmm. And the most gorgeous car. Uh -huh. Cars, um, and we're gonna have the most gorgeous The most gorgeous swimming pool. Mm. Is that a go for it, Tim? Oh, yeah. I thought we were going out. Later. <laughs> Every time you said I do in the past, did you mean it? Yeah. So what was Faye then? How could you vow to forsake all others when you were still seeing her? Did you have your fingers crossed or something? <laughs> no. So you always meant it when you said it? Yeah, at the time. But, Max, you were still seeing Faye? Yeah, on and off. Uh, it wasn't regular. You know, it was a casual thing when it suited. That doesn't make it any better. Every time I ever got married, I was in love with my wife. And then you were unfaithful to her? From time to time, when Faye and I were thrown together, we sort of gave in to the temptation. She was married too, you know, and we wouldn't want it to develop into anything that would threaten each other's marriages. But it just seemed like simple but exciting sex. It was no great love affair or anything like that. I was attracted to her, so when the opportunity arose, I just, well, you know. Gave in to temptation. Yes, but I'm different now. Different how? I'm wiser. Do you still get attracted to other women? Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. You have been a tower of strength to me through the worst period of my life. I don't know if I could have survived without your help. And now that you know it all, my darkest secret, I think you seem to have come to terms with that. You are a wonderful mother to the children. They need you. I need you. And I wouldn't do anything to jeopardise that. You haven't answered me question, Max. Do you still get attracted to other women? Yeah, of course I do. Look, I, I remember the first time that it happened. It was only a couple of months after Susanna died. I was on the up escalator at Lewis's, and this woman in a tight skirt walked by. And I kept on looking, and she kept on walking, and I thought to myself, oh, my God, is it happening already? But it, it did happen, because it's only natural. But the point is, I didn't do anything about it. Yeah, but can you be sure that you'll never do it? You'll, you'll never give in to temptation. As sure as any man can be. I want a hundred percent sure, Max. I want to be certain that you have changed. And if you can't convince me that, that you'll always be faithful, then I think we should call a wedding off after all.
fancy hosting my wedding reception. You are? Yeah. Well, where are you going? Nowhere, just now. Max! The Dixons think I'm a low life. Who am I to disappoint them? Max's idea. He's live up there. Have you missing someone? What the groom? Oh, yeah. Well, Lance, where is he? What are you going to do? Toast the happy couple. Live. Pull up a seat for Bar Wars starting on Friday at 11.20 on Channel 4 and continuing on E4 from Monday to Thursday. Next, size really does matter in a new series of Location, Location, Location.